the AP poll was released. The AP preseason top 25. And I have it on the screen here, of course, with uh, with Dennis Dodd. Lots of fun. But let's go through. We'll go through all 25 very quickly. 1 through 10, Bama, Ohio State, Georgia, Clemson, Notre Dame, Texas A&M, Utah, Michigan, Oklahoma, and Baylor coming in at number 10. Number 11, Oregon, Oklahoma State, North Carolina State, uh, USC, Michigan State, Miami, Pitt, Wisconsin, Arkansas, and Kentucky. Now, the last five, we have Ole Miss, Wake Forest, and then your next round of Big 12 teams, Cincinnati, Houston, and BYU comes in at 25. Tennessee was unranked. Texas was unranked. Iowa unranked. Penn State, uh, et cetera. Right? There's a lot. Now, every year, we know that somebody, somewhere, is going to drop out of this top 10. And somebody is going to come from unranked to jump into the top 10. Bill Conley did a really interesting write-up on this over at ESPN. I would highly suggest that you go and check it out. Uh, I thought I had it pulled up somewhere. But it explains that there's typically two teams that fall from top 10 to unranked. And there's typically uh, about two teams that will jump up to be ranked in the uh, top 10. So let's take a look. Who are the top 10 teams that are most likely to completely fall out of the polls this year? And I've got multiple options, and obviously anybody that I say in this is not going to be happy that I'm actually calling out their team. I understand that. But let's take a look at it, okay? Baylor is in at number 10. Obviously, they are the lowest-ranked top 10 team. They are like number 126 in the country as far as returning production goes. Uh, They do have really strong lines of scrimmage. They are strong in the trenches. What if Blake Shapin doesn't pan out? Right? What if uh, the running back, the the skill guys that they are replacing, what if the new guys don't catch on quick enough? This year's schedule, a little more difficult. You got to go to Provo. You got all, you got a bunch of road games and whatnot. Got to go to Oklahoma, et cetera. This is one that I could certainly see happening. All right. So Baylor's one. Texas A&M. They just did this same thing last year. They were a top 10 team heading into the season and they dropped completely out of the polls. Again, they've got a very difficult schedule. It's not outside the realm of possibilities. It looks like Haynes King is going to be the starter there. Do we think that all of a sudden their offensive problems are going to be fixed? Are they all of a sudden going to be able to hit explosive plays? I mean, if not, it's going to be really difficult. So Texas A&M is one. And then I put on here Notre Dame. Avery Davis, we got the news. I'm going to talk about that uh, after the first break. But Avery Davis, the wide receiver being out, that is, um, I mean, that hurts for them. Uh, and you've also got a really difficult schedule if you're Notre Dame. Now, obviously, there are good things that you can find here with Notre Dame. Obviously, there's a reason why they are preseason ranked number five, but you do have a first-time head coach. You do have uh, all kinds of things that are changing inside that program. There's a lot of hype, but if you come out and get whipped in week one against Ohio State, What does that change, right? Does it change things going forward? Do you end up losing a game to North Carolina? Do you lose to Clemson and USC and Ohio State? Do you lose in Las Vegas to BYU? I mean, there's a lot of landmines on this schedule. This is still a great program, but what what does Notre Dame need as far as losses to stay in the top 25? Do do you fall out if you're 8-4? and Possibly. I mean, Texas A&M just did it. So, yeah, those are the ones that I think could fall out. As far as the teams that could go from unranked to the top 10, Tennessee, very possible. That schedule, it's not super easy, but you can navigate that thing, right? There are ways that they can actually get those wins, um, and it's not just brutal game after brutal game, right? They've got breaks in there where they can fit that. Uh, Texas, yes, I understand Quinn Ewers is not the starter right now. It doesn't look like. Uh, but there are still playmakers everywhere, even without some of the injuries. Again, we'll talk about that here in a little bit. But uh, but Texas does have talent. Year two under Steve Sarkeesian, maybe this is the culture building uh, building project. We'll see. Penn State, unranked, could be a top 10 team. Sean Clifford, in year however many, this is the first time that he's actually been with the same offensive coordinator two years in a row. If he didn't have the injury last year, 
maybe could have been. I mean, they were a top 10 team at one point. Probably could have finished a little bit stronger. Likely wouldn't have that loss to Illinois. Likely wouldn't have the loss to Iowa. I mean, there's all kind of things here, right? So, Penn State, if they stay healthy. New running game. You got a, you got some new toys at wide receiver. Parker Washington's still great. Uh, we'll see about that offensive line, but regardless. And then, just an outlier, Kansas State. Their win total sits at 6.5. If Adrian Martinez hits for Chris Kleiman, that could be a really fun team. And to schedule, again, that sets up pretty nicely. Pretty nicely. So, I do like Kansas State. Uh, we'll see. I don't know that they'll be a top 10 team, but they, they could certainly surprise some people. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.